Leeds United made the most of their second chance in the European Cup against Stuttgart. The team, they say, has more foreign reserves than the Bank of England. Leeds won 2-1 in Barcelona in front of a tiny crowd. Their hero was Karl Schutt. He scored the winner less than a minute after coming on as a substitute. And tomorrow's his birthday. Good evening. Good evening. First and foremost, Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Hey, hey, hey. Feliz Año Nuevos. What's that? Spanish. Happy New Year. Is it? Yeah, for our exalted leader. Should we say bueno at this point? Bueno. 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 Sound. Uh, so, uh, are we all sticking to his New Year's resolutions just yet? No. Well, I don't have any. How's dry January Matt. going, Ben? I've drank more this year <laughs> than I did last year. <laughs> uh, yeah, Ben was just telling us earlier about his uh, beer hamper he got bought that he's just spent all January drinking rather than drinking it at Christmas. But anyway, by the by. Uh, so, we're, we're very happy to be back in 2019 for episode 39 and we're joined by Broadcasting Royalty uh, from BBC Radio Leeds, Adam Pope. <laughs> hey, thank you guys. Happy New Year. Yeah, same to you, mate. It's good to have you here, pal. Uh, thanks very much for coming on. Pleasure. So, the usual stuff we've got to get into, we'll have a little look uh, sort of broadly at the season because we've got Adam here who's best place to talk about the season in general uh, we'll have a little look at some of the games that have just gone including the 2.5 defeats that we've just had because I'm not classing QPR as a proper defeat <laughs> we played a load of under 12s uh, we'll have a look at some of the injuries transfer windows and we've got the usual Raggy's predictor Raggy's back Raggy's back for Raggy's predictor because I made a right mess of it last time <laughs> uh, to be honest no, in right. my defence I was very much disappointed after the whole result mm. which I got reminded of yeah. by a, a YouTube subscriber <laughs> who told us that we should have got in after the wins against uh, Villa and and um, Blackburn and made most of the jovial times rather than coming on and sounding mardy after Hull. Yeah, I don't think doing a <coughs> podcast straight after a game is a good idea. No, as much as it was in very salubrious surroundings, uh, we went to Nave Studios in Pudsey, which was lovely. Right. Um, yeah, we was all a bit deflated, to be <laughs> fair. And I had a terrible chest infection, which isn't really clearing up that well now, if I'm honest. Um, so, we're live on Facebook, live on YouTube Live, and on Periscope. So if you want to get involved, get involved. Uh, but I can promise you now, there'll be about 50 comments saying, are we signing anybody popey? So just prepare yourself now. <laughs> uh, so, I think the best place to start, mate, is... Um, for someone who's took every game in this season so far, and obviously being fully involved in pre-season and the build-up to the season, did you ever really expect it to play out in the way it has done? No, I think pre-season when we knew the Bielsa thing was happening that I think there was um, well it's either going to be spectacularly good or spectacularly bad and short lived um, obviously it's been the, the former and way beyond my expectations I think it's really hard for a coach to come in who hasn't been involved in English football in any way and, and I draw you draw the comparisons to say Jukanovic who at least had a bit of time at Chelsea did really well at Watford when he came in first season and that wasn't even the beginning of the season was it um, and got them up and obviously last year Wolves you saw it happen there but it's so rare to make an impression like this so way beyond what I expected yeah and so there's a lot of there's a lot of talk about <clears throat> from the side because we had a fellow broadcaster on here not saying that we are but you are um, and I'll, he'll remain nameless at this moment in time but he was very sceptical about Bielsa coming to England uh, and he, he was more leaning towards Steve Bruce and the other uh, well-trodden names that we get within English football um, and he, he was very sceptical that Bielsa's style would even work in, in England and there's been a lot mentioned about his high tempo pressing and the, the fact he likes to work his players hard do you think that's ever really played out throughout the season in terms of there's a big worry that we'd get burnout and I know we're only halfway through but for me I, I don't really see that that burnout argument I, I don't, like don't see the burnout because I think even the whole game recently I thought they were still trying to run over the top of the hole towards the end so I've not seen it at all I haven't seen it mentally either in players Injuries are different. That's not burnout. Injuries are different, and they've been, I mean, ultra unfortunate in that sense, and that can uh, continue as well. Coffee as well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and that, so, uh, um, so no, I don't see it. Now, that's not to say that two months down the line it could be, because obviously everybody's talked about the squad being, well, be else talked about the squad now being two players lighter than than what he inherited with obviously the Blackman situation and, and Saez off to Getafe playing against Barcelona. So, yeah. um, so that is that is an issue. So right now I don't see it though as, as, as a problem. Yeah, no, I think uh, <clears throat> I don't know where I saw it, but Bielsa likes to work on a, a, a four injury thing, so he expects to get four injuries. I mean. I've not really kept count, but we've, <laughs> way we've, more than four. We've, we've got to be quadruple, uh, quadruple treble that at the moment, aren't we? Surely injuries and recurring injuries. I mean, Paddy Bamford's obviously it looks like a similar injury to mm. the previous one or a complication. With Do you think that with that? I know they're going about Rob Price and he's done really well bringing people back. 
Do you think that maybe we were just a little bit too early for Bamford? I don't know because he, he had a he had a good run out in the 23s prior to that, didn't he? Yeah, it was just a, it's a freak thing. Yeah, you know, mm. that that I mean that originally happened to him. It was a freak yeah. thing. And let's face it, Bielsa said the other day that he's been really impressed with how the medical team have mm. brought players back. And but yeah, so, no like, sort of so, though, just to maybe they just sort of. I think they're, they're, early, I think they're notoriously cautious, really. Mm. I, I I would say, and I think when the injuries have happened, they've been really. Um, Really, quite freakish, as Barani yeah. says. So I don't, I don't see any problem with the bringing them back at the time. Sometimes you think a bit longer. Look, it's about Izzy Brown being February, isn't it? Before he's yeah. fit, he says, but he won't be match fit until mm. February. So I think it's the other way. But yeah, I've got no issues there. I just, I just can't believe how freak the injuries have been this season. I, I've never known a season like mm, it. It no. normally happens when you when you're losing games. Mm. That, that this amount of injuries kicks in but you're right we, we look back at the stats I think the YP did something and they'd had about 18 injuries this was prior to Christmas some of them will have been like repeat injuries or players have been injured twice say like Dallas and now you've got more to add to that mm. since then so it has been a, an unusual amount so all the more credit to him for yeah, being like, where they are <clears throat> like you say a lot of them are freak ones I mean Patrick Bamford damaged PCL it's something that you get in a car accident from the impact with the dashboard the PCL's the bit that holds your kneecap to sort of in situ. So it's not a strain or a turn type injury. It's a it's an impact injury. Mm. Uh, Berard, he, he tore the ligament off the bone, I believe, didn't he? And I mean, yeah. that's a freak injury in itself. Um, so yeah, we have, we have been incredibly unlucky, but I think that's also a testament to we top at league with what potentially for the last couple of months has been a fairly patched up squad. Would you agree? Isn't that the, isn't that the story of the season that he's coached the same players? To, to be better yeah. mm -hmm. um, only look you all know Barry Douglas is, is the most regular that's in the side that's that's come in in the summer but he has made play and seen things in players that I've got to say we didn't know existed I think the Calvin Phillips thing has been, been marvellous I've always been a supporter of Calvin I have to say and it's been quite 50-50 with him but I think what's happened with him has been great and I it's amazing how many coaches, bar Steve Evans, said they wanted to work with Calvin. They've all said it over the last sort of four or five managerial changes, and he's obviously brought the best out of him. But the talent is there. Bar Steve Evans, what does Steve Evans know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, but but that says it all to me that, that what he's got out of the play and made the, all the young players that have stepped up. I'd say um, nearly all of them have just gone straight in and and done re at least very well, if not excellently well. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we yeah. joked on the last. Um, Joined up show we did with Ryan Wilson on uh, the L LS11 podcast, who's back in the morning, by the way. We uh, Ben Parker at uh, half past seven, so give it a tune into that. But we joke that it kind of looks a little bit like, all oh, right, he's injured. Okay, uh, what have we got in the under 16s? We'll uh, we'll put that <laughs> lad in because you know we've seen debuts for Leif Davis, we've seen Jamie Shackleton rise to, from pretty much nowhere really um, to to a place in the team. You know, um, at the weekend Halm. we've seen Apo Halm come in, and we've seen. You Jack know, Clark. trust yeah, Jack Clark and things like this, and it, it's it's got to be testament to Bielsa and his team and the, the things that they've put in place at the club. I mean, what what's Thor Parch kind of like? Cause I've heard it's a bit like Fort Knox now. He can't get in unless you've got uh, <laughs> the correct security pass. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they have put two new wooden gates on there actually on the way in, but I mean, we don't get to see the players outside the press conference mm. if if they do put a player up, but you literally arrive 50 minutes before, so you don't get a feel for how everything is there you, you, you don't I mean, you can see things when you park up you can see the new sort of facility that's there for the academy um, the, the feeling you get is obviously off the head coach and you know that the, maybe the odd player that you see up there at the time but the feeling is good I would say mm. you know it, it, it is I think I think you don't get any feeling of dissent anywhere or, or bad eggs or something and I think I think there is an argument to be said that and Forshaw sort of alluded to it, sort of, sort of quite subtly, that someone like Samu Saez, for whatever reasons, he's gone, he's gone back to Spain, but maybe he, he wasn't singing from the same hymn sheet as everybody else. So, but that is such a rarity now. Always stuff would come out about players or little pockets of players yeah. not being, not being at it, but or, or with it or on board. But they seem to be all on board. Yeah, and I think the games against Villa and Blackburn can only be testament to that that they carried on working for each other into the depths of the games to then go and snatch, snatch a result. I and against Forest as well. I know we lost Forrest, the game, yeah. but down to ten men and you know one nil down. We look at that game last season. We would have probably lost it for four nil or something like that. Mm. You look at the car, you know Cardiff away or or something like that where uh, Cooper got sent off uh, fairly early on. Yeah. Um, what did we do this time? We were the better team for a big chunk of it and got back into the game and ended up. You know, it was actually our kind of us going and chasing that game that, that resulted in another couple of goals but it just goes to show that they're just believing themselves and 
um, yeah, testament to that team ethic as well. And just they never know when they beat. It's great. Yeah, how many of us though when we, the Forest game when we went two one in front thought bring Apo Halm on and and try and see it out? Be honest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that's that's a reasonable point. And not this. If you look at what was happening on Saturday at Queens Park Rangers, so it's Sunday at Queens Park Rangers. Why not leave them on? Yeah, because. Mm. A, I'm thinking, are they going to start with Matt Smith, which they didn't, but they'll bring him on at some point. And obviously the goal with Bidwell, you know, getting above, I thought if Harme had been there, the one big centre-back we had on the pitch, then maybe, you know, it might have been a different result. But yeah, I do agree, that has been a bit strange. And he says it's been for tactical reasons, nothing else. I mean, at the time, I was like sat at home thinking, sort of in my head, I'd probably look, try and see this game out a bit now. But then I'd looked at the way we've played all season and I just thought, have we really... Have we got that in us anymore? Particularly with the amount of injuries we've got. <laughs> with Cooper missing, with Iberardi's missing, you know, we, we, um, Calvin Phillips not being on pitch. I kind of, after listening to his, ras- uh, his rationale after the game, I kind of had to agree with him that I don't think we had it in that side to be able to sit in and see yeah. it out, if that mm. makes sense. Particularly with 10 men. I don't think we could have sat there and invited pressure. I don't, if, if we'd have brought Halman on, I don't think we'd have had to do it in that sort of way. I think you just move it around that he's in just because you need that height mm. we needed that height from set plays or whatever I don't I can't really recall Forrest having many chances that sort of threatened us apart from those that were dead balls which is uh, Achilles yeah, big yeah, time yeah. Minute, yeah. Mm. I think um, I was listening to just to, to look at some of the defeats we've had this year I think I was listening to Phil A's podcast earlier inside Ellen Road with Joe and Phil and um, they were saying there appears to be a bit of a blueprint now to beat Leeds and it's sit back, absorb pressure, try and catch them on the counter attack, score early, and then just as we like to coin it on here, shit out them for yeah. for for yeah. however long's left in the game. And that and the times we have got beat, bar in West Brom, that they just overran us. To be fair, but again at West Brom, I don't think it was particularly down to they were the better team. We had a lot of poor personal performances yeah. that, that allowed them to do that. And we people, still had seventy percent possession. Yeah, but people will yeah. disagree as well. I still think that at West Brom, it does sound a bit like sour grapes. They did have a little bit of a run of the ball sometimes for a couple of their goals. I think one of them was a clearance that deflected straight into the path of Harvey Barnes. And mm. Dwight Gales is one that nine times out of ten it hits the defender and goes wide. But in this case, it's the defender, wrong foot, Peacock Farrell ends up in back of net. So uh, West Brom should have been should have had the game won by half time for me because yeah. they were they were creating a lot of causing a lot of trouble. And I agree that it's the one game where Leeds have been overrun. But yeah, I agree with you with with the others. I think uh, it's very hard to say that Leeds have not been in, in every other game. To be quite mm. fair. Mm. Um, and you could make an argument so they could have got points out of you know and I do say, with the whole thing I think Hull actually rather than Birmingham did try and play a bit as well yeah they did actually um, yeah. and I know Bielsa sort of played you know a bit of testament to that to to Adkins afterwards so I know they're on a good run but yeah Birmingham was was horrible yeah you know, from all and the referee should have should have got hold of that earlier as well but their tactics yeah they did and but you're right you've seen that before where they, they've allowed Leeds to come almost to halfway sit in and then just hope to, to catch him and it, and it has worked to an extent hasn't it yeah I mean we watched the game together didn't we Raggy and yeah. it was very obvious out of possession that that's all all, all all planned on doing sitting back in and then using Camille Grzycki and, and Bowen as their yeah. out ball whenever mm. they got the chance and again going back to I know we, we're going over all ground here but the first goal for me is a mistake Phillips puts his foot it, it's not a goal essentially the second one is Douglas should do a little bit better really Bailey Peacock Farrell makes a great save in mm. the in the in the build-up to it then dropping to Jared Boyne's feet. On the runner form, he's on, by the sounds of it, Spurs bound. He was always going to score, weren't he, to be honest? They were just clinical on the day. Yeah, They just took their chances and we didn't. Um, well, when I say that, we didn't make a huge amount of clear-cut chances in the whole game, I don't think. Um, but we didn't take any of them. And that, and that was, and like I say, that was that mm. was the difference in the, in the game. I think we talked about it and said, I think we could have been there while 10 o'clock and we wouldn't have scored. Yeah. The two chances we had cleared off the line... I think Marshall makes a good save from Roof's header towards mm. end of game. You know, it would just add the feel of one of them games that we could be there yeah. forever and we probably weren't going to score. I mm. think, isn't this the thing that he's he's pointing out there now? I mean, he's not. He is. He is <laughs> definitely not happy about getting out of the cup. You can you can tell that, and it, obviously it's a third defeat. But he's right. If he if he's pointing to, and he's he, he not going to argue with his maths. If he's saying that Leeds are acting like a bottom five championship side of the amount of chances they need to create to score rather than the, the top end where they need say three chances then you've got to keep creating chances just to give yourself a chance of scoring because yeah. you're just not efficient enough and then if the back end isn't doing its job which clearly isn't when it comes to set pieces and you've got not a toxic mix at the top of the table but you've got a very difficult mix and it needs resolving and I'm hoping Friday night that you know if Cooper's back after 65 minutes what last night against Hull Reserves then um and Janssen, who was back training, we were told, weren't we, on, on Monday? So yeah. that 
suddenly that problem gets solved. Yeah. I mean, I want to just come on to Pontus Janssen a little bit. I have been a bit critical of him um, but on this show a few times, particularly about his attitude sometimes. I felt a few times last year we saw him go down with injuries and mm-hmm. I questioned, is he really injured or does he just not fancy it? But I think the last few games obviously granted we've had defeats I think he's looked at exactly every bit of the player that we signed when we first got him and he came through on loan and he was you know he just looked a step above it, everybody in this league and I think we're back to that Pontus yeah I think he's been brilliant recently and, and I think that putting Cooper back alongside him shouldn't be underestimated because I think Liam Cooper's been top class as well mm-hmm. this season to be honest yeah um, just nipping over onto Facebook then I a think few even comments. if sorry man if Cooper's not 100% you, we've got to play him on, on Friday hmm I, I think you've got to run with that risk. Do you? Mm. Yeah. Because that is a risk. <laughs> I don't know. But who, I, who go goes inside of him? Halm. Yeah. I, I, although I agree with you in one respect, I also want to try and look at it as a bigger entity and I fear that if we bring him back in and he has a reoccurrence of... Is it mm. an, essentially, he's had knee surgery in yeah. the day mm. and we have a, a reoccurrence, we could then lose him for another... Yeah. That, another that's month, the thing you don't want another to do. two month, and then we start yeah. creeping then towards like the the mm. serious business end of season. Um, so I agree. I'd love to see Fit Cooper outside of Pontus Janssen as opposed to anybody else. But then I also agree that we probably need to make sure he's ready before he actually comes back. Mm. Do you agree with that? I I do because well I think that's the way he'll do it anyway. If there's any doubt, even if the player says he's ready, then he, he won't he won't play him. I don't think. Yeah. Um, and then yeah and then for me I'd love to see I'd, I'd do like oh look there's no Phillips as if for the next two games because of the suspension so I could only see there being a harm eh? I don't I don't imagine there'd be Tom Pierce playing and there Leaf Davis playing then or anything like that mm. I think it, it, you'd have to go that way but yeah hope, hopefully he'll be back but the 65 minutes is good he didn't come off injured yeah. or anything he put it on ice didn't he straight yeah, away did, yeah. I think so but um, no that is encouraging and I know we saw him briefly last week and I think he was hoping that the Derby game was was very realistic for him. To be yeah, fair, good. did he t- did he think he'd take Halme off at half time against QPR because he was booked in the first half and he was thinking about Friday and thinking all he needs to pick up is a silly another yellow and he's going to be suspended for Friday. Well, he said it was. Ta- we did ask him. He mm. said it was tactical. So whether whether he meant that is yeah, because that of, as opposed to injury, he was asked tactical or injury, and he said it was tactical. So you could argue it could be that, couldn't you? So mm. um, just to protect him. Yeah. Uh, just a quick nip onto Facebook because there's a few questions coming in in Pope here. One from John Precious, um, former guest of the show. Yeah. Um, Pope is a legend. Does he Thank have all? Alter- Does he have to alternate which side Noel sits on so that he loses his ear in equal ear when Noel gives it a full no, blow and gets in? There's a strict feng shui about it. Right? <laughs> okay, so, so uh, Gantry, Ellen Road. Um, so we're down towards the scratchy shed end, almost level with the penalty area. So we haven't got the best view down towards the cop end. But uh, so it's me on the left, Noel in the middle, and then presenter, which can be Johnny or or Catherine, um, or Ronan or, or whoever uh, on the right, and that is how it has to be. We are, and we try and replicate it at away games as well. So my right ear gets it. Well, you're on headphones, I know, so you've yeah, yeah. but uh, the right ear gets it more than uh, than the left, I suppose. I'll be honest. Uh, uh, I think when the winner went in at Villa, and I listened back to Noel, I. <laughs> Do honestly think loads of dogs in the East Midlands were like, "What's that noise?" Because yeah. he went to a, a different level of, uh, yeah, of octave yeah. at times. Yeah, we, we've sort of learnt to, to cope with it. It's not, um, <laughs> yeah, it's not standard, is it? But yeah, <laughs> but, hey, fans love it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Uh, so, over, uh, a few bits about transfer window, which we'll get onto a little bit. Dave Bennett makes comment that we're all in t-shirts, apart from Young Ben. Uh, normally, Paul, we just put you in the in the picture. Yeah. Uh, the air conditioning's been rattling out all day. We come in at night and there's a polar bear sat in corner. It's freezing. <laughs> so we're normally all sat here in coats, woolly hats and that, but this week we've... Uh, this we've radiator's on. Yeah. It's like I'm back in Barbados. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he has to get it in every show. Uh, Ke- Kevin Illingworth brings up a good point. Uh, do you think Coyle has been unlucky to be overtaken by Shackleton? <sighs> what I think is that he's... But Bales has obviously trusted Orta and the club to make the decision that Coyle isn't needed this season and so I don't think this sounds bad on Louis but I don't think he's wasted any time sort of saying right okay they're away that's not part of my plans um, and so I don't imagine he'll know too much about it so in that sense I think he's not even Bielsa's radar yeah. for me unlucky because I think he's he's he could could still be a part of something here but as he said himself, he's 23 now, isn't he, Louis mm. Coyle? So second season at Fleetwood, effectively, he's got two full seasons now, isn't he, with his with his loan extended. So um, 
unlucky. I, I, th- I think he's just unlucky by history, the way it's fallen from coaches coming in and what have you, because um, much as I wanted to see him get regular football and I wish he was at Leeds, um, I think others are going to go past him. He's not going to go past Ailing clearly at the moment. And so Shackleton has benefited from that and with the Berardi injury, of course, too. Mm-hmm. So if Louis Core was here, I'm sure he would be in the side right now, to be quite honest. Yeah, I think uh, Shackleton's probably jumped ahead there as well with the fact that He's flexible, isn't he? His, yeah. his natural position yeah. is supposedly the central, central midfield. So, mm. you know, as we've seen with Dallas a little bit this year, you've got a, a player who can play a few positions as opposed to where Louis Coyle probably is a right back, right winger yeah. at a push where he has played for Fleetwood a few times this year. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, that might be part of the reason. Uh, Nippy back over, uh, Paul Williams, Popey, happy Christmas after hey, the hey. Villa game. <laughs> Best commentary ever. Oh, that's that? nice to know. Yeah, nice Thank to know. you. Um, Mark Jones, I listen to Popey and Noel every game. The best comedy radio ever. Is that a veiled compliment? <laughs> yeah, <or>? yeah, yeah. <laughs> to be fair, mate, that's yeah. better than some of the stuff we get said on here. Um, <laughs> no, we... Yeah, he... he's, he's fun. He's fun. Dean Senior, is there an option to bring Wilkes back in January? I doubt it now. They've just extended his yeah, life. They've extended, haven't they? Yeah. Um, yeah, look, and getting rave reviews again, I think the last game, yeah. too, didn't he? So uh, there was a lot of assists. With, they won five, didn't they, Donny? So I think he had, uh, I think he played particularly well in that. And he's, he's obviously, I think last time I counted, he had eight, didn't he? Yeah. Um, so, no, so that's not happening this season. Um, and we don't know what the future He has signed a new deal, but obviously we have to wait and see with regards off the pitch developments for him, too, uh, in the summertime. But he signed a new deal. Leeds obviously see there's something there for him. But um, yeah, Doncaster benefiting big time. But no, he's not coming back now, is he? So yeah. Then there were a clip they went through quite a few. Well, went past quite a few players over the Christmas period. Mm. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Went back and did another few after he went past <laughs> them all. They went back and did them again. <laughs> yeah, um, Adrian Hockey. Thoughts on Clark staying put in the transfer window? Fingers crossed emoji. Got to mention that. I don't think it's That's what happens if my Alexa reads anything out. Fingers crossed emoji. <laughs> poo, poo, poo emoji. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> so, uh, are, we, are we worried about um, potentially our newest, greatest starlet in Jack Clark going? No. I can't Talk into that one, Ben, because that one's not working. Oh, <laughs> Sorry, mate. So, yeah, I don't think he's going anywhere. No, I, I don't. He's so. already he already turned down City allegedly in summer, didn't he? Uh, I'm not sure. Well, apparently this story goes history, has it, that... He's already turned down City before. He's getting the playing time. He's under a great manager. So for me, there's no real reason for him to go anywhere. I no. think he's benefiting from being this impact sub that he's been. He's got the start against QPR, did well. But for me, we're most effective in the first half, and that's when they were fresh. You know, So keep doing what he's doing. And for me, the impact sub that he is at the moment will allow, allow him to develop into the role that we want him to be as this class winger that we know we've got. Mm, definitely. I mean, what's your thoughts, Popey, on uh, Jack Clark? In your time covering Leeds United, we've seen the emergence of Fabian Delph and, and people like that. I mean, where do you rank Jack Clark in that sort of Probably the rank? best. Probably the best. Because yeah. he's the most exciting. He reminds me of two players I really admire, Trevor Stephen and Mikel Arteta, because he just goes past people without looking like he's fast, but he is. <laughs> he's so clever and so intelligent and not afraid just to play you know a sensible ball as well if needs be and we've seen bits of the defensive side that he needs to do because QPR kept him at bay for quite a while actually I think he worked hard so for me I think he's I know it's early because we've got 12 games in aren't we with him but potentially I think certainly he's, he's one of the best talents and you're thinking Lewis Cook you know you're thinking you know Fabian Delph but and I know different positions but I think he's sensational I really do I think I love watching him and uh you know, the 23s, mate, he's worth watching on his own when he's been there now. He's, and he, it's weird, isn't it? Because he, until Saturday, he hadn't. He was the first new starter, wasn't it? I know Leif Davis was there, if you like, because of the injury to Douglas at, at Villa, wasn't he? He'd already got his start, but but he was the most experienced, if you think about yeah, the young yeah. ones, really. So, um, just great. And and I think he's playing it right, Bielsa. I think he is playing it in, in the sense that he's bringing him in. He actually referred to it. He said, look, Jack Clark started. You could tell maybe that the whole game he wasn't quite at the standard that he could have been or, or has been but there were signs there that he could be and I think I think I don't have any fears at this stage of him going now my worry was at one point was Tom Pierce before he got injured I know there's been a lot of interest in Tom particularly after getting the, the England honours and having a good back end of last season when he was in the side on the heck and bottom he's been out injured yes he's come back now but my, that was my fear was that, that he could be prone to to a bid mm. so. I don't think now Tom Pierce is third choice left back well, what would, what what would you do Friday night? You know, if Douglas oh, isn't ready, Douglas I'd play isn't ready. I think I'd 
I'd go with Davis. Would you? Mm-hmm. Controversial. I say I'd put Tom Pearson because he's that. You, much you, you don't like Tom Pearson. That's why you go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, <laughs> because I think, I think Leave Davis is better, mm. right? Well, I mean, we had it earlier in the season, didn't we? When Douglas first went injured, and he was then he played Dallas there, yeah. and I, and I think Pierce was fit at that stage. Um, yeah. Maybe he wasn't hundred percent. I don't know, but it was before he was actually announced he was injured. And at that point, I thought, well, you know, where does he lie within the pecking order? He doesn't seem to be really pushing for the fir- first team positions in favour. It, it, in my opinion, but but and you can't read into being subbed on, subbed off either. The oh, that no, was I don't, kind I don't. of it. But he's back in the squad. He was back. Like the boot. He's been in one of those big protected boots. Yeah, we saw Christmas ages. lights yeah. switch on, didn't we? And that's there. been quite a while, you know. Mm. So I think it's it's probably and we sort of almost forgot about him really with all the other injuries that had gone on because he wasn't part of the, the first team setup. He was yeah. barely making the bench at times, wasn't he? So I like it. I think he's I think he's a very very good player. And if he can recover that form, then. Then they're going to be really strong there, and you know, and, and the alarming thing is seeing Douglas lose that form. I know mm. he's, he's had problems lately with injury or sickness, whatever, but um, that's you know, we need someone to step up, really. Oh, yeah. so we discussed the Douglas thing just before we came on air that he, he seemed to have, maybe just a little bit before Christmas. I, I think I said it on the uh, podcast after Hull. He like it running round with like lead in his boots. He just looked really sort of sluggish in a way, but if you think about it, he came in. Pretty much close to the end, the beginning of the season, and when the rest of this team's done two months under Bielsa training, and he's been at Wolves, maybe been, you might be playing, you might not, and not done that sort of regime that the rest of the team done, and it's it's catching up with him now. Yeah, with a little muscle injury and. And sort of other stuff like that. I as mean, well. the left back position has notoriously been terrible for Leeds. Mm. We have seen some bad players in left back, haven't we? Let's be honest. I'm not going to name them because it'd be unfair, but we have seen some pretty poor left backs, and then we've seen players being asked to play that role. So famously, Andy, Andy Hughes played left back for mm. a long period of time in the promotion winning season. And uh, I'll be honest, when we first signed Douglas in the beginning of the season, it, I think it told an absolute country mile that he was a natural left back and suddenly we looked like we'd got some balance to the defence but I, I don't know what you think Popey I still minus Sheffield Wednesday which I know is a random uh, mm. match to put, I still don't think we've seen the very best of Barry Douglas uh, what's your thoughts on that? Probably right yeah I think um, I agree with you I think potentially he's he's been the best or would be the best left back they've had for a long time there um, not the quickest to say, yeah. and, and I know defensively he's been cut out lately. But going forward, he sees passes better than most, and he drills it into feet, and I like that. And he sees it quickly, and he does support obviously Alioski really well. So, but I think yeah, I think there's more to come. I thought he started off brilliantly there. I thought, it, yeah. but then as you say, it was a it has been at times a low bar, and the Pierce finished really well last season. But prior to that, it has been you know a bit of a. <laughs> Bit of a difficult position, <laughs> yeah. and you're right. Just and you go back over the years, you think of Bassoni, and you think of you know they had to switch Pelty in there for a while. Yeah. He's not really left back. You're right. It has been. I mean, that's going back a long time, isn't it? It has been a real issue for them. But now this has been blessed with three very, very capable ones, um, yeah. in, in, you know, including Davis, who, who does look like he could be really, really good. I get the feeling with Barry Douglas because I am a big fan, a massive fan. Yeah. Uh, I get the feeling that if he gets through a solid ninety minutes, that'll push him on build his confidence and then we'll see the better Barry Douglas as it goes on and I just think that again I agree uh, similar with Jack Harrison and people like that which I know he divides opinion massively Jack Harrison but again I think we've seen a dip in form and we've not really had time to sort of pick that back up again and it's kind of running away with a I couple of I think he's players. done Jack Harrison has sort of done right. I mean Villa were a bit of a bad game for him but apart from that I think he's he's done alright the irony of the Forest game was he probably had his best game for yeah. ages and got yeah. hooked at I that time I absolutely going to say that yeah. what, do, what do you think Poppy I mean with Jack Harrison yeah it, it can <clears> be frustrating <throat> at times it, it can Um and look, he's not number nine, clearly, in the, no. the QPR thing. I think that was, although I thought he did his best to switch with Roberts, you know, and take that load between him in the first half. But yeah, I mean, that 45 minutes against Preston where he was devastating. Um, I think sometimes he seems to be the victim of the sort of how he's, he's sort of almost like his gait, really. He looks like he's looking down, and he's got a low centre of gravity, and looks like he's running into legs a little bit. I always try and measure it in terms of like well, what balls have gone in that could, you could reasonably expect. You know, centre forward to put away, and I know Leeds don't play with a big number nine as such, and that's where it's difficult for me. I don't see too much provision there. Whereas Alioski, even though we can argue the toss against him loads, the stats have shown, or certainly up till Christmas, that he was the most 
um, productive player in creating chances in open play in the mm. championship. You know, so um, and that's you know that going on the Optus stats now. Whatever you think of those chances, that's that's incredible, really. And I just didn't see that from Harrison. Mm. There's a player there, isn't there? Mm. But I know it's people because of the three defeats and the saying he started. People are oh, sending back and send Baker back and all that. That, that I can't see that happening. Bielsa really sort of rates these two, doesn't he, as part of his squad going forward? And I can't see him wanting to jet some players. Yeah. Um, it's not really his way, is it? Not really. No, he's he's looked at it, and and, and and for me, Harrison, he's got he's got real ability. Yes, in there, yeah. there, there is yeah. for me, yeah. So persevere, yes. But I do like Jack Clark starting uh, yeah. as well. So I think he's turning the tide. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Nip back over onto Facebook because again, there's a lot of questions coming in. Uh, Carl Cummings says, Popey, you need to create your own catchphrase now because Noel's got to get in. <laughs> you need to have your own. Um, a few people commenting about Saez. We'll get into Saez in a little bit. Um, a few other points here. Michelle Vorm has been mentioned today. We'll have a chat about him when we get onto the transfer bit. Um, do you think we're actually going to sign anybody this window? That's a question from uh, Griff Chris. Sign or loan? Um, I think I think he's probably meaning both. I think I would be really shocked if they didn't bring a keeper in. Um, I would be really shocked because I think, not least for the injury situation, you know, if Peacock if I was to get injured, personally, I think he should prove that he's capable enough of uh, of keeping the shirt. You know, he, I know there's criticism of him even drawing the seven victories on the bounce, and he hasn't looked as confident as he has been at times. But I think just to get another keeper in is really important and. For me, if there was still Rob Green at the club, then that would have been ideal. But um, so there, they have to. Darlow, obviously, Benitez has said, look, he's not up for grabs, but Rob Elliott is. Um, look, things can change by the end of a window, can't they? So, do I see them spending multi-million pounds on players? I really don't see that happening. Um, I think that shows, me, well, from what it looks like on Twitter, that um, they want four million for Darlow, and, and we not don't. To yeah, learn. we yeah, and we don't really seem to keen on paying four million for him no and then, then you look elsewhere you've got like westwood's playing again isn't he you know heaton's been involved again fraser force has been mentioned but then you're looking at huge wages aren't you i think mm. and they're just you know look at leach got to be an attractive proposition aren't they players that aren't getting a, a look in oh, and, yeah, you know, they, 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 not in, in in the past when you've been halfway at the table and maybe threatening to go towards playoffs it's not the same thing right now what a, especially what a for a goalkeeper as well i always remember yeah. signing alex mccarthy when he was a young mm. lad can you remember getting mccarthy in mm. yeah, yeah, yeah he was mm. it was it was outstanding when he was here and he made all the sounds that he didn't want to go back but we i think where was it at the time was it South, he went at Southampton then, was it? Alex McCann? Redding. Yeah, it was yeah. Redding, um, Redding, yeah, Redding yeah. and we got, him, we got him on loan when we had we went for a right glut of emergency mm. goalkeepers. I think we had Frank Fielding at one point as well as a, an emergency goalkeeper. Yeah. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be very surprised not to see a goalkeeper come in, but I think with the way Bielsa sees things, the goalkeeper would have to have very particular attributes that would fit yeah. into our style of playing, the biggest one being... Good with his distribution and good with his feet, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, confident with his feet as well. The marked difference between... Bailey Peacock Farrell in the QPR game a lot of times so receiving ball 10 yards out of his 18 yard box as a sort of a third centre half if you like at, at certain times mm. particularly when we, were, when we were pushing the agenda a little bit to try and get back in the game so yeah I'd be uh, I'd be extremely surprised but then again we've talked about it many times on the show there's names getting banded about I mean Michelle Vorm has been one mm. that apparently has been offered to the club and we've turned him down because uh, we're not interested for whatever reason that's fine um, but it's not kind of oh we'll go for X because he's good. Yeah, he might be a good keeper, but he might not have the, f the foot yeah. attribute that Bielsa wants. So suddenly we start narrowing that search down, and it's it's not quite as easy as being made out. We see names being getting pinged about regularly. I mean, Tammy Abraham's a prime example at Villa. Uh, somebody put out on Twitter the other day from a decent source his sort of weekly wages. You know, we're talking about just go. He, he, if he was still at Chelsea now, he would be one of them names that Leeds fans would be saying. Mm -hmm. Just go and get Tammy Abrahams, and if he's on fifty-five grand a week plus an appearance fee plus a goal fee, you, you could be talking up in upwards of hundred grand a week. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's not that simple as just going out and going. He's not playing. We'll have him. Is it? Do no, you know it, so, it isn't. And you can say Bielsa was probably the most open about the situation that's been left with Blackman and say he's not there. And Anders coming into definitely number ten now leaves a position on the wing open and so the lad at Hoffenheim Zuba gets mentioned doesn't he mm. um, and I think the point you make now is, is true I think there's so much about Bielsa saying right I've got these lads alright some of them might not be firing on all cylinders but they know exactly what I expect of them they've been right through the regime from you know July all the way through 
what's what's going to happen when I bring in a guy that's not been playing yeah. and isn't maybe up to my standards at this point and hasn't lost quite enough kilos etc and then yeah you could be looking at another month before they're yeah. ready so as you said you've got to be really really good to come in and, and make a difference straight away but right now if you're who's not who's not going to look at Leeds and go right gosh I could be a legend here I could go there and make an absolute difference we are halfway through getting to the Premier League this is, and to know what that would mean to the club and y your own career yeah, if yeah, you're then yeah. there to the end of the season like what is not to love so yeah um, it's the best so or much as a difficult window Leeds are the best place to go and go and buy mm. and do some action in it because of where they are on the table yeah. There's been, I mean, we talked about it just before I came on air and you was unaware of it, but um, a little le a little article's come out today about um, potentially Chelsea calling back Lewis Baker, which is, seems a bit left field. Well, the, the only, if that was to happen, I've not heard that, I've not heard any, you know, we're going to do the press conference tomorrow, so let's see what uh, what's said, but that would be, A, another position that would be light if, if he did. Why would Chelsea do that? Obviously he's not going to play there, so would they think, well, he's not getting enough game time at Leeds, do we send him out somewhere else? Mm. Um, that's the only thing I could think of. Yeah, um, we, I think we all agreed with that, didn't mm. we, before, and that it could only be that. I can't see Leeds depleting the squad any no, more than we already are. Unless they've got someone coming in. You know, well, yeah, so, and it yeah. frees up wages, <clears throat> potentially. Yeah. But, yeah, we'd need somebody to come in because we're so light as it is. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean look, he does use them reasonably regularly. He's, there, he's in the 18, isn't mm. he? If not so, yeah, he's not... Uh, and they, you got to remember how many people he jettisoned when he did come in. Never mind the players that aren't alone. That third pile of players... That he said, right, I don't want anything to do with these. Go out alone, get rid of them. And what, you know? Obviously, Baker was coming in the other way. He obviously thought, no, right, this this guy can do something. So, yeah, I, I'd, I'd be surprised unless it is that they want more game time for. It. And they do watch the guy when the guys come on loan. I was speaking to Jack Housen about this. They are watched closely by their host clubs. You mm. know, there's people they're in touch all the time. So, you know, I think I saw well, something today. Arsenal have put the first ever dedicated loan sort of head coach if you like basically mm. a coach whose sole purpose is to monitor loan players who are playing away from the clubs and sort of assist them Chelsea will need a whole team yeah exactly 39 <laughs> loans have got out somewhere. I think Jack Harrison mentioned it didn't he in an interview he did and it might have been with you Pope yeah, actually, I think, previously yeah, he, talked to, he, he talked said that he'd had a lot of support yeah, from absolutely. the Man City side of things as well so yeah um, <laughs> Mark Jones says does Pope feel star starstruck sat next to Chris Miles that's a dig oh, at you, Raggy. Here we go. Again. The Chris Miles <laughs> things is back. Um, one, uh, one name I have it's heard, pink Christmas. <laughs> just, to, just to chuck out here, is uh, Sheridan Bookholder. Bookholder, yes. Bookholder. Uh, 22 year old Algerian left winger. Now, the, it was a name that was just. I thought you just like made that up no, no. so I checked it on Football Manager. <laughs> it's no, absolutely no, a Legit, no legit. But the interesting bit comes with this because let's be honest, you could chuck any name at anybody in the January transfer window and make a splurious link out of it. Um, I brought that word back just to annoy that person who would not like <laughs> it saying. Because, uh, like, me and Ben jokingly mentioned Johnny Housen on a previous podcast for a previous podcast we used to do and the day after it was linked in the press that Johnny Housen was coming back to Leeds so it doesn't take a lot to get a bit of traction but the interesting one about this kid Bukolder Bukolder yeah he's at Lille at the moment he was signed for Lille by uh, Marcello Bielsa okay. uh, and he was previously at Marseille who was also signed for at Marseille by Marcello Bielsa left winger fits the profile not getting no game time at, um, at Lille so again you start looking at that as a, a maybe potential I'm not sure well they need somebody in to add to, to that on either side of the pitch because he likes to switch them over doesn't he but saying that Alioski for me has probably had his three or four better games or best yeah. games mm -hmm. in a row for a while and uh, not often that we've we've been able to say that because <laughs> I'm normally banging a table when, when I'm watching him but but, um, but yeah so since Saez has gone as well mm, yeah Ooh, controversial right a little bit just checking it out yeah just checking it out yeah Right, okay. Could we also say that because Saez has gone, Philip's got sent off. Is that what, are, we, are we having any <laughs> no. other links to the Saez departure? That would probably because Farshad didn't tackle someone. Oh, oh. no, stop. <laughs> stop now, nipping this in the bud. Anyway, back over on Facebook. Uh, does Popey think Bielsa has a stubbornness about him with regards to signings? I think uh, I think it manifests itself in, in a loyalty to the squad that he's... But don't forget, he's, he looked at everything before he came, didn't he? 23 is not just the, the first one but he obviously thought right we can do this mm. building my uh, criteria of, as you say four injuries a week if you're off per match day and, and I can still do this I've seen enough potential in these young guys so I think 
stubborn or confident in his in his belief that he's got the, the to- he's keep saying it we've got the tools to see this through so provided that some of the injured players do come back otherwise they, they clearly haven't so there is a stubbornness but I think it's more a, a real belief that now we've got the resources to do it we probably all disagree and that they need more um, not just because of the injury front but just form and if, look we're all expecting maybe that there would be a bit of burnout come February March time um, so but he's um, he's probably an owner's dream in that sense isn't he I would say oh yeah <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. yeah he, 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 he is so but I get I get having got to know him and, and hear him talk and, and what have you you, you sort of think now I understand why you're doing this and, and, and why you think this works. Tight, tight squad. Creates a team spirit which we've not seen. We saw it in spells under Monk probably, mm-hmm. um, but not like this for such a sustained period and such an effective period as well and a style of play. And he, I think you can only get your way of thinking and your philosophy across to a small group so quickly. I think if he had a large group of players, it would have been much, much more difficult to have handled early on. And uh, he's... Uh, He's done it. His his criteria seems to work, and you know we can't really fault him at this stage, can you? No, you know, no. You can't, you know. I, I mean we, we've talked about it loads of times on this show. <clears throat> Whichever way the season goes, this season will go down in history, one way or another. Just for Marcello Bielsa being here, just mm. the way he is in in his press conferences, the way yeah. that he's very obviously not just him solely, obviously his team around him as well have changed the entire dynamic of the club because yeah. essentially the team that turns out most Saturdays is essentially the same team that was here last year, minus Matthias Click, who was away at Utrecht, minus your Barry Douglas, yeah. but everyone else was here. And he's, he's getting a tune out of some players that we didn't know he could get a tune out, like right. you said earlier on. And he did it so fast. Yeah, he so did quick, it, He yeah. did it instantly. But we, he, thought it, he thought that was a long time, didn't he? He yeah. said seven weeks is a long time. I thought we were working. It's been <laughs> all over the summer, yeah. It, it is, it's, it's phenomenal. Um, I, mean, I mean, what is it like to go and interview? Well, you see, as a bloke, mm. like, I'd say... If I sat down with him on my own, I think I'd just really like him because I think he's um, obviously he's humble. Uh, I mean, super intelligent and patient as well because he gets asked you know a lot of the same stuff. I mean, not necessarily by us local. We're trying to move on a bit now. We discussed that. Didn't we? It's <laughs> been like beginning of the season, there was like certain questions like when he, when everyone talks about the blue bucket. Yeah. For yeah. the first few weeks, and everyone's and he's, you could just start seeing his face like, why are they asking like, me about yeah, the bucket? And, and he's really patient with it. To yeah. Be fair. It's difficult because you can't sort of you know if we're talking and then you'll you might say something you can come straight back and and think oh really, you can't do that when there's a translator you've got to yeah. ask, hear it, ask again and it's and you're wary that there's only so much time because everything takes about four times longer to be honest <laughs> isn't it so so you try and ask a few questions that you think well I definitely need to know that that and that and then let someone else have a go so it the dynamics change totally it's but. It's really enjoyable. The pre one, like tomorrow's, they're the best ones because he just talks about anything. You can literally throw anything at him, and uh, yeah, he's. Um, Do you ask him if he listens to talking shut? Yeah, I'll ask him. Yeah, he's. <laughs> you know what? He's 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 on a different level. Yeah, yeah, you can tell that. Can't yeah, you? the just... way he's, he's immersed in the game, but the way he gets his point across, and um, and the way that he just looks as so I think he looks as just as a servant of the game, really, and uh, and I think that's that, that's great and. Nothing is about false modesty. Nothing is untrue with him. You know the way he talks about fans and the, and the badge and the shirt and all that. Totally means it. You know he's, mm. it comes from a, seems to be like real sort of socialist angle that this is really important to lots of people. And I'm sure that's why partly why he took the job on. They think, wow, this is going to make a difference. This if, if I get this right. I, I think he. I also think he uses. Uh Mr. Lamrani very cleverly as well because there was a there was a I don't know if you caught it there was a bit on Sky Sports where he told him something obviously in Spanish and as he translated it he didn't translate it exactly and he picked him up for yeah. it and I think Prutton mentioned it in studio and went oh it appears that his English is actually a little bit better than he's it letting is. on I yeah. it. we walked out the press conference there the other day at uh, QPR Can I just, before, and he, and he, and did he, he did say, say something about chicken what in the <laughs> what, I'm in, sure. in, as he were walking Bear out mind, Ben's been drinking watching. all of January yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a fair one. I was watching it and I'm sure he said pollo which is chicken pollo is chicken yeah and he said, I'm sure he was saying because <laughs> someone, so, someone asked him a question yeah. as he was sort of leaving. It was like a joke thing, and I'm sure he said, "No chicken for you." Really? Oh, I don't know. He, look, Might not I, I, I can speak English. <laughs> <laughs> Less wine yeah, for you. That. 
<laughs> but, Spanish is great. <laughs> but I can even talk in English to some of the staff. Yeah. And and it's not bad at all. And uh, does he have a Yorkshire accent yet? He's um. How do you describe <laughs> it? Um. Yeah. I don't know. It's just, just so quiet, isn't it? So you, yeah. you, know, you want to hear him, don't you? But I tell you what, the amount of selfies that people want to take with him—incredible. I mean, by the time he got down the stairs at QPR, two flight, he must have—I saw him have three, and he's trying to get into the tunnel to hit, you know, to talk to the staff about injuries and, and players and stuff. But yeah, he's. Um, yeah, I don't think he gets the fuss, does he? But but he's so patient, and yeah. I, I do admire that in him because, for a man that's totally obsessed by the game and. Uh, and, and making things better, that he still has time to do the the human stuff. Yeah. I just, just got a wry smile there. Um, last night, obviously, the under twenty threes played it all. <coughs> I was flicking through our um, our Twitter feed, the Talking Shut Twitter feed, and literally within two thumb swipes, there was at least three selfies of <laughs> Afam with Marcelo Bielsa. Yeah. So I jokingly tweeted out saying. Does anybody know if Bielsa was at the under-23s match last night? And then I was inundated with people going, yeah, yeah, he was there, yeah, yeah. And I thought, sarcasm's lost on Twitter, a fair bit, to be honest. But anyway, while we're on about Twitter and a slightly different tangent, I've been caught out with the fillet uh, curse today. What's that? Uh, somebody's retweeted a tweet from me in 2014 uh, after the signing of Jimmy Kebby, saying, and I quote, at Phil here, YEP, now that's a signing. Uh, it was at quarter past four <laughs> in 2014, so that's me get out. And to be fair, I did think Jimmy Kebby were a bit of a signing, but... Yeah, I think we all did at the time, but... Yeah. Until they started playing. Yeah. So, yeah, oh, so. man, I'll Jesus. never forget, because him and Cameron Stewart came together, didn't they? Yeah. And Sheffield Wednesday was the day we that's was right, yeah. And uh, in what turned out to be an awful month, which should have been so good. And i never forget interviewing Cameron Stewart... <laughs> And, he's, and I said, well, you know... Were we still doing step-overs when you interviewed him? Oh, honestly, <laughs> I, I, So I said, I said, look, you and Jimmy Kebby have arrived. You're going to be on the team sheet against Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah, he said, there'll be a few uh, few opponents a bit worried now seeing me and Jimmy Kebby on that team sheet. Come <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Yeah. Here we go. Things <laughs> not to say. say. And Cameron right. Stewart, yeah. Mind you, got them about 450 grand, didn't they? Well, yeah, so, there yeah, is that. So, but, but yeah, there's uh, this... Yeah, yeah, they were... Oh, gosh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, it was awful, wasn't it? Have you, um, have you ever had any... I don't want you to name names, but on. car crash interviews of people who are just a nightmare to interview? Um... I remember when yeah, Nick yeah. Monk gets shared to you once yeah, about did, uh, identity. Yeah, identity. Yeah, identity. After, the really that, after Huddersfield. Yeah, it was yeah, after yeah. the Huddersfield game at Ellen Road and uh, lost one of them. And to be fair, Town had given Leeds a bit of a C into that day. And yeah, they did, scored, yeah. didn't they? So, and uh, we were getting a lot of um, stick from fans, was Gary then. And it was one of those where you got a lot of fans saying gutless, spineless, this, that and the other. No identity, which is obviously the phrase that, that, that Town were using because they were the season they went up, wasn't it? And he really, really lost it. And then I was asking him about his relationship with the chairman, and he said, well, "That's none of your business." And so, well, it is for you know, x amount of thousand of fans. And he goes out. But to be fair, he apologised afterwards. Right. Always got on with Gary. To be fair, he's he's not something you got really close to, but it, look, it happens, doesn't it? Yeah, of so course it does. Yeah, it happens. But he had a, but, but he had a slow start, didn't he? And yeah, it was oh, it was a when terrible Ch start. It was yeah. when was there, who had this reputation of just jettisoning managers. And yeah. so, yeah, I mean, the pressure was probably on him massively, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You do hear what, what do you have to say about Gary Monk? <laughs> you were his biggest fan the other week. <laughs> I did like Gary Monk. I did. I just liked like, him until the exit. He was, he was like a defeat away against Fleetwood in Cup, wasn't it, from being sacked? Mm -hmm. And then he suddenly just turned it on and then oh, did, yeah, we just well. fucked it up a yeah. bit. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, going back to that, uh, I was driving out of here against the Bristol City game and there was... Oh, in fact, you, it was you guys actually on BBC Radio were saying one of the Bristol City reporters got yeah, the mic knocked yeah. out of his hand by uh, Johnson. Yeah. Like, wow. Um, yeah, Lee, yeah, apparently the, the lad that was doing it, um, and Lee, he was absolutely fuming that they'd lost. He thought they were better. He was a little bit, I felt a bit, I haven't really seen the same game. <laughs> Delusional. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, the Dean Smiths about him. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah so he's gone out and then he'd, he'd given the um, reporter sort of like, one of those sort of, yeah, right then, big smack on the back, and it looked like a proper, like, you know, overdone it sort of thing. So, um, yeah, so it got mentioned when he came. I think the guy was a bit shook up by it, but hey, you know, look, it's really tough. And it's, within half an hour at the end of a game, you've had a result go against you, and you've got to come out and either justify or, or whatever. And, and it must be really, really tough. So, mm. um, so you're sort of wary of that as well. But uh, no, he's, he's quite far as late. And he was dad, really. His dad used to run soccer schools years ago, Gary, who's a really, really mild guy. And obviously, he's, he's, he's 
worked in a lot of club Bristol City, Yeovil, hasn't he? And what have you? Yeah. And uh, yeah, so um, but I think his yeah his lad seems to be a bit bit more bit fiery than his, uh, than his dad. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, but hey, you know. You could always go the Thomas Christian's route. Just ask the club. Uh, so let's talk about your tactics. Ask the club. <laughs> yeah. Are we signing anybody? Ask the club. Oh god. Um, <laughs> it's terrible when you get a team. <laughs> like, else would te- tells you his team basically. Thomas would just can tell you the complete opposite. <laughs> if people were injured, you know, nice guy, but oh wow. When it came to team news, wouldn't couldn't lie straight in bed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We uh, we were at Millwall, weren't we? The other year we watched Millwall on the gantry. In fact, we came up and saw yeah. you actually before the game, and we were we were still on the pitch at the side of the Millwall fans were dishing the pelters out like <laughs> no tomorrow to everybody, and we were laughing, weren't we, about Christensen? Christensen was coming up to do an interview with you, and he was quickly being hightailed by one of the club staff who were obviously <laughs> rabbiting in his ear about what he couldn't what he couldn't say kind of thing after, but it was quite comical. <coughs> Excuse me, going back over to Facebook then. Um, Ben James, this is the best chance in years to get out of this league. Get this window right, and we get promoted. Get it wrong, and it could be years before we fire. Sorry, hold on. Before we find ourselves in this position again, got to grab this opportunity. Would you agree with that, Popey? Because I, I've, I could probably screenshot that and take it yeah. back to the monk time when we was in the playoffs, and then yeah. we didn't get in the playoffs, and you know that exact statement again if we don't do something in this window we're definitely not going to get promoted and in that time we didn't but do you feel like yeah. that or well you, look you've got to agree it's the best chance ever I mean then this time what those few years ago you're thinking nailed on for the playoffs at least um, under Gary Monk you know, and then what was it Barrow and Pedratha came in on the on the final day um, and there was a statement team put out obviously against uh, against Sutton wasn't it in the mm. FA Cup so this time, I, I feel obviously in a better position because we're in the top in the top two. Yes, I do feel that it's a cracking chance to go out and for the sake of look, I'm not taking small money, but you know for the for the millions it requires. But two really key signings could make a massive difference here, if not just to freshen things up. So, much as I respect how Marcelo's gone about it, and if he doesn't want that to happen, then then fine. But personally yeah I'd like to I'd like to see it and I'd hate it to get to mid-Feb March where people are going told you so it yeah. hasn't happened back mm. in January oh, which, and I know that's been the history of things here mm. it all lies with and- Andre Rogers at the end of the day doesn't it I suppose is look lots been said about his business with 11 sports and that, you know and he's got that sort of things what are his pockets when it comes to leads has he got enough or has he got inv- other investors that are the 49ers going to step up and do, do any more what's going to happen there have they th- not just the desire, because obviously he wants to get in the Premier League, but is there enough in terms of the depth of the pockets just to keep Leeds sort of, if you like, say mid championship for Lord knows how many more years? Or are they prepared to go and chuck that 10, 20 million it might take now just to not even guarantee it, but maybe give a better chance? Better fighting chance, yeah. But then again, you're thinking, they've, they've, you can say they've overperformed, but the resources that have been put into this season. You know, and they are still considerable. You know, I, I, I won't, I won't disagree that just getting rid of all those players at the beginning of the season and paying them off, or trying to get them half loaned out, or, or whatever, or doing deals—that's expensive. That mm. is, and um, then, you know, that you, you can't not ignore that either. So, so there has still been, I mean, on top of the Vieira, you know, sale, which was disappointing, I have to say. Um, but with Bamford coming in, you might sit all evened out. But it's a still an expensive club to run. So at the moment, I'm thinking position says everything. They've done all right. Maybe there is just enough in the tank, and I won't be sort of crying into the beer. Come, <laughs> oh, I can't face it. Oh, I but yeah, I mean, from now you think it's there's to blow. That's yeah. the thing. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, and, true. And, yeah. and we've never been in that position. I mean, oh five, oh six, my first season doing Leeds, um, and at best they were third, weren't they? They're chasing Reading, chasing Sheffield United this year. They're the best team when it comes to consistently. Um, it, not only in style, but the best thing because the top of the table so far. Yeah, so I think it's theirs to blow here. The big thing for me as well is that as Leeds fans, we're, we're, we're good at sticking in a little bubble and going, we're a good side, we're a good mm. side, we're a good side. But now we're starting getting other 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 journalists, other pundits nationally mm. who are turning around and saying, do you know something? Le- Leeds and Norwich are probably the best two sides in the mm. league at the moment. Because... You know, some of your big teams. Who, we're just trying to wind no, us up. No, so we're not allowed to talk about them on this radio. <coughs> so everyone talk, listens to it. Well, we will do in a minute anyway. We'll talk about them for a different reason altogether. But uh, moving it on slightly, because we have gone around a little bit in circles on transfers. If you want a bit more transfer tittle tattle, though, if you nip over to All Leeds TV on YouTube, they're doing a, a Leeds United transfer special tonight after our show. So if you nip over to YouTube Live, you can watch. I've it heard there. they're going to announce a player. 
No, they are really. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Can you remember the problems you caused when Angus Kinnear were here and he kept butting into well, yeah, him? Yeah, well, I stopped him telling us all the players we were going to sign. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, so, moving on slightly today, we have actually seen uh, Connor Shaughnessy, actually it was yesterday, join Hearts on the, for the remainder of the season. Paddy O'Connor has come back from Blackpool and then gone to Bradford. Very unlucky man, in he? Comes back <laughs> from Blackpool. Blackpool Congratulations, Paddy. Welcome back to Leeds. Uh, you're off to Bradford. You are Bradford <laughs> from Blackpool. Just where would you rather be, Bradford or Blackpool? Live in Bradford. Bradford at Yorkshire. Yeah. Do you think you yeah. could live in Leeds and sort of? I work in Bradford, and I have to say I'd probably rather be in Blackpool. <laughs> Ray, I have one lasting memory of Blackpool. Blackpool's the only place you can go clubbing at five o'clock in the afternoon. But I'll, 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 disappear, <laughs> I'll disappear on this tangent for one second, and I'll, I'll keep it brief. Uh, before my missus had my first son, because uh, I've only got one son, uh, Judd, <laughs> we went to Blackpool. One of them yeah. things of right, we're going to end up with this this little thing that's going to ruin his life for the next however long. We're going to go to Blackpool and going to enjoy yourself. So we booked ourselves into this hotel, which will remain nameless because they don't want a court case. <laughs> uh, and we'd seen the picture and it was like, oh, it's great. Yeah. Did it have a sex dungeon? No, it had no sex dungeon. I went to one that had a sex dungeon. <laughs> right. well, let's keep Jeez. on this tangent, man. Uh, so we go to this hotel and needless to say, uh, TripAdvisor uh, was ripping us off. It looked nothing like the pictures. Uh, it was a single bed at best. Uh, a lot of the wallpaper hanging off. Bear in mind, my missus was like eight and a half months pregnant at this point. Uh, it'd been heavy snow. Anyway, long story short, it was an utter disaster. And to compound the matter, uh, we were walking back from the front. It was even with kids with like flashy ones and that hitting you and you know all that sort of stuff. <laughs> missus is massive because she's pregnant, so we decided to cut down the back streets. Jesus Hold Christ! <laughs> Never again. <laughs> Honestly, I thought I was going to die. I thought, right, this is going to make a right story. This man and pregnant wife die in Blackpool tragedy. So that's the last time I've ever been to Brad uh, Blackpool. Uh, so I enjoy Bradford party. Anyway, uh, on that cut tangent, and then obviously Louis Coyle has extended his loan at Fleetwood. We've already discussed yeah. that a little bit earlier on. Uh, so moving on to Friday, then what's now been billed as a massive, massive game against Derby County. In Frank Lampard's dab account. Frank, sorry, yeah. I forgot to prerequisite it with Frank Lampard's dab account. Um, in the grand scheme of things, is it such a massive game, Popey, as is being made out? If we don't get a positive result out of it, is it's so damaging? In the grand scheme of things, I'd like to see Pody Connor back at Leeds. I think he's a good yeah, player. Yeah, that is a good point, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and he's going to rejuvenate at Bradford as well, so it ain't that bad. Big get, yeah, it is, because they've lost three on the bounce, whatever you say, three on the bounce. Got to, got to stop that. Um, and you need to send a message out uh, this weekend to say Leeds are back and I think that's why you know hopefully you've got Janssen, Cooper, Hernandez Roof all back and available so um, yeah it is a big game I say yeah. that every week but no it is because they, they've got to come out with a for me they've got to come out with a victory on yeah. this one on Friday night Is it bigger because Norwich play West Brom as well? Yeah, yeah that is a massive yeah. yeah You I think as well we we did Derby over didn't we at the start of the season so they're going to come wanting yeah. to beat us they're going to really want to beat us Let's believe Harry Wilson's injured. Is that? Yeah, I think he's he is. He's a, a doubt. doubt. He's a doubt. Yeah. yeah. Which is mm. good. He's got some right goals. Yeah, I was going to say, we're yeah. not very good from dead balls. And they, no. Yeah, exactly. and he just thunder bastards them in. <laughs> <laughs> um, do we expect to see Forshaw in the holding role? Don't speak, Ben. Shush. Shush. I really like Adam Forshaw. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't ben, Ben's going to I like Ben Um... Although I found out he supports Liverpool, like, but what? It's <laughs> disappointing when he was at Everton, like, but um, so uh, I, I really like, and I think I think it, it's not dissimilar to how some people look at Calvin Phillips in the past. That he does an awful lot of stuff that, that people don't really register. Yes, lately there's been some calamitous stuff in football terms on the pitch where he's dropped things short. But I actually thought he was one of the better players on Saturday and Sunday at QPR because. Um, yeah, he had the captaincy, but he had a lot of young lads to sort of pull through, and he, you know, he kept Leeds going where they could. In. It wasn't a great game, I get that, but yeah. I don't think it was as bad a performance as people suggest. And I think he's, he's just like he gets it. I think he's always got it from the beginning since arriving. So I think he's, I think you'll see him. I, I just do not see him not playing. Yeah, yeah. Just going to Derby, Frank Lampard's Derby County. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I was thinking about this today, the, the scene, and, and I'm, I'm guilty of this myself, I build it up to Derby County are a good side, Derby County are a good side, and I had a little look through their results that season went on this season, don't go on whoscored.com because it's shit. Um, <laughs> but I, I went through and, and realistically, if we, if we, if we look from. away from the Jack Marriott, Harry Wilson, um, Mason Mount, and um, what was the other lad? Tom Lawrence. Tom Lawrence there. I look at their back line and, and Richard Keogh Keo is yeah. awful. fills me with joy every time I see him play because I think mm. he's, he's, he's below standard for what he gets touted out at. I mean, 
do we have that much to worry about about Derby? They're obviously they are quite potent going forward, but then again, we've seen them looking extremely weak at back and and a bit like a soft <laughs> underbelly if their attacking line's not playing. If that makes sense. I think Richard Keogh and Co, they'll be flanching a few set pieces, won't they? Well, yeah, it's, true. It's, yeah. It's, so. Um, no, if the Leeds get anything, if Leeds get anything like defensively right and allow that, you know, attacking sort of quote to, to sort of get flying, then they should be fine. Yeah, that because you know, I still think they're creating, you know, enough enough chances to win games. I really do. Um, so I'm not overly concerned at this stage. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm not. I, I will be concerned if those two players, Janssen Cooper, start and they concede from set piece. That's when I'll I'll be concerned. A bit, bit worried. Yeah. You know, but but Derby what sitting in the last place for the players at the moment, aren't they? So yeah. and they they've, they've done all right. Not you know. So um, I'm not overly concerned, but but yeah, I think there's a bit of tension. But the tension because of where they are on the table and um, mm. the thing is, I don't think that? Derby can come and do what other teams have done, where they sit behind ball and no. look to break. Mm. They're, they're going to have to come and try and play as their own game. And I think if they want to trade blows with, I think there's there's only one team that will come out on top. That's my personal thought on mm. that. I think mm -hmm. the game will suit us more. Than yeah. some previous games we've had, I think because they'll have to come and attack us, even though they're coming to Ellen Road and, and it'll be absolutely rocking here on Friday night as well. Um, yeah, it's going to be good. It's yeah. pretty much yeah. sold out. So, uh, yeah. There were a few yeah. tickets so, left this morning. I think I think, I think yeah. that makes out for an open game, which I think suits us. And I th I'd, I'd like to think as well, after a, a reasonably poor run of form recently, despite not playing particularly too badly, mm. that some players will have real tails in, you know tail between legs and be thinking right we're going to put this put this straight and yeah and start showing why we're top of the league and i think if you listen to some of frank lampard's comments that will undoubtedly be coming in the next couple of days you could just play that in dressing room before kick off the game and that should be enough to um, yeah because mm. I, ca I can't imagine bills is the type of person who gives too much away before the game anyway i, I kind of get the feeling he sets it up all week and then just expects it to happen kind of thing I, mm, I don't know I, I mean I don't know Derby what they're four points clear of Forest aren't they at the moment so yeah. they're not going to be budged out of out that position so pressure's on that I mean, there's some enormous pressure on teams below Leeds when you think about it nobody expects Leeds to be where they are they are where they are but you look at Stoke got rid of the manager mm. you know Villa you know they need to you know if they're going to do it they're going to have to start really motoring you know Derby being in around Forest has spent boatloads of money far more pressure on those teams than there is on Leeds I would say pressure with it's because it's because it's Leeds isn't it and, yeah. and we now expect them. but in the grand scheme of this season no way did anybody really expect Leeds to be where they are no. but some of those teams are struggling badly I mean Borough as well I mean Pulis they're all for getting rid of them yeah. Karanka mm. that, the Leeds game everybody was saying much as the fans seem to quite like them that they all the talk from the lads at BBC Nottingham that they'd been expected since Boxing Day that he might be going. Um, so, but the one club that really that that you can't really say that Villa have changed their manager. So yeah, um, massive pressure. Shouldn't forget that massive pressure on all the sides that are, that are coming to Leeds. Definitely. Yeah, just uh, last tip onto Facebook because we need to run this on a little bit. Uh, a lot of people asking about Lewis Baker being sent back. We already discussed it with Pope. He's not aware of anything, and he'd be surprised oh, if it was yeah. from Leeds. So last tomorrow yeah. though, so we'll find out about that tomorrow. Um, a few people mentioned about the set pieces, yeah. Uh, have you anything, heard anything about how long potentially Douglas might be out? We talked about that in terms of... And obviously tomorrow's the presser. Yeah, I mean, I, I imagine he'll tell us tomorrow if he's going to be missing this, this weekend, but I, I think you're right. I mean, you're talking at the translation when he said, we'll be out without him a while, but then said, look, he made it through his the Nottingham game with a muscle injury. It didn't sound too bad, so... Um, but no, nobody's come back to us and said... Oh, he's definitely going to be out for the next two or three weeks, or right. like that. Sometimes, sometimes it gives you a full rundown. Um, right. Did that early on this season, but no, at this stage, not sure. Well, good news there. Mm. Right then, so we'll, we'll move it on a little bit, and we'll go with a bit of prediction time because uh, there's a few predictions starting to creep in on there anyway. So we'll go for this. Raggy's predictor. So over to the main man, Chris Miles. I mean Raggy uh, for a bit of. <laughs> sorry, mate, I couldn't help myself. No I just no saw need. yourself, and I just I couldn't help it. So a bit of prediction time. So Poppy, just to put you in the picture. Yeah. I'm sure you do listen every week, but if you don't, <laughs> uh, we have a go at badly predicting every result, and you get a point for uh, getting it right, or you get three points, and you get a point. For just getting exact score. I'll leave it oh. to Raggy. Have a go, Raggy. <laughs> right. um, yeah, so the QPR game. Um, Ryan Wilson, who was our Mickey Peak uh, guest of the week, uh, actually lost his place because he got it bang on. So we gave it to Chud <laughs> instead because he went 2 1 uh, lead. So he didn't pick up a point for the guest. Um, old Ben, you went 1 0 QPR. So you got a point. 
uh, both Gaz and Young Ben uh, stuck their loyalties with Leeds and didn't get a point because they went for Leeds victories. I went 2 1 QPR, so I got three. So that leaves Guest still out in the lead on 32. Um, me now on 25. Young Ben 24. Oh, Ben 23, and Gaz is the uh, new loser on 22. Oh, what? <laughs> but as, uh, as Ben has said all Man season, for it's a for for that. So. <laughs> so obviously, moving on to Friday night's game, uh, Leeds Derby. Um, what were you all thinking in terms of uh, results-wise? And um, we'll start with our guest, Adam. I'm thinking 2-2, two, two, but I'm going to go 2-1 Leeds. 2-1 Leeds. Mm. I like it. I like it. Ben. Uh, 3 1 leads. Just because I didn't want to give same predictions. <laughs> ben. 2 1 leads. 2 1. I can see Derby scoring, but I think we all. See, this is what worries me at the minute. I didn't know whether to go 3 or 2. I but desperately want to go 2 1 leads, but as the current run of form, <laughs> I, I, I struggle to see a clean sheet coming. So. I wish I'd go for it. Well, I'm going 2 0 Leeds, so that might change. I'm mind. going 2 1 Leeds. You're going 2 Just because Popey hasn't chance that uh, they're going to win it again, so let's <laughs> stick with that. Yeah, well, I'll go 2 0 then. 2 0. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, see how, uh, we'll see how they go. Yeah, a few people uh, giving their results. Uh, Lee Cox, he's gone 2 0. Cooper back with a clean sheet. Matt Taylor's gone 3 0 Leeds. And Ian Martin's gone. Uh, sorry, Ian Martin Stevens has gone 2 0 Leeds. Simon Fox has gone 3 1. We've fried it. Click with a Thunder Bastard. Yeah, click. Yes, it'd be good. Yeah, it would be nice just to, I think, get, get back, get it off his back as well, because yeah. it does look like he's since the carrying song. the burden around since the songs appeared as well. Because uh, he had a couple of chances at all where he could have pulled trigger and he opted not to. Mm. The one, I think, there were one particular one in front of us. But um, Paul Williamson makes a great point. Uh, Williams, sorry, makes a great point. Just stop the conceding of early goals. Mm. Every every game, we're yeah, yeah. Going on every game. I mean, and obviously that that whole stat about Leeds coming back better than anybody else from being behind is now getting reversed seriously, isn't it? Mm. I and mean, what was it the other day? Was it prior to the last game? I think twelve shots on target, ten had been had gone in, hadn't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Prior to which is, mm. yeah, that's worrying. It's a lot. It's a it's a lot to come back from. It is, and uh, yeah, if they can do that, then yeah, you'd fancy them, wouldn't you? Certainly in the latter stages of any game, even if it's tight. Yeah, definitely. Fingers For crossed. Forest, the Forest <coughs> game was the first time we dropped any points after being in a winning position. Listen, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that just goes to show if we do, other than that Forest game, if we've edged ahead, mm -hmm. we've kept, we've yeah. kept it. We haven't even conceded, you know, equalisers. We, or, or if we have, we've gone out, mm. gone out and, and won the game. We've won every other game. Luke Hopkinson's chirped up and put, "Don't be surprised though if we get five. <laughs> well, I've yeah. said all season we're going to give somebody a slap to ass at some point that nice, may be that I'm not sure but can you imagine the statement if we did slap Derby mm. well if you, we, we go into it you've had Klitsch has had a rest Douglas might have been injured but we still had a bit of a rest Roof. Pontus has had a rest Roof's had a rest Pablo's had a rest it sort of leads itself to they're all going to be chomping at the bit for this yeah definitely I hope so. There's a few I, people, I hope I've not jinxed it then. There's a few people asking about Bamford and Izzy Brown and people like that, but obviously you'll find a bit more out in press. I would imagine. Brown, tomorrow. we've been told, is not till mid Feb. Right. That's what he told us. He's fit, but won't be ready to play till till mid Feb. Bamford, yeah, he's not put any sort of. Normally he puts like two weeks, three weeks, whatever. But all we were told he was behind Roberts, and um, his dad was at Nottingham Forest apparently the other week and um, chatting to uh, Steve Hodge, and I think he said, look, it's definitely not as bad as before. But he wasn't saying when it was going to be. So, right. um, yeah, look, wasn't involved on on Monday, last night, was he? So no. you're thinking that it won't be it won't be Friday, surely. I'll tell you what, Roberts has impressed me. The last I was impressed. Yeah, games. when he came on against Hull, Hull he made a yeah. difference. Yeah, and when he, he did, did when he played against QPR, if if he scores that one that comes off oh, the double post in the yeah, first couple of minutes, yeah. a different game altogether. Absolutely. But yeah, I was I was impressed with him when he's come on recently. I mean, in that ten role. Mm. Um, but then when we've seen him played out wide, I've not I've been less impressed with him. Mm. So I think I think he's better. That was better, early on in the season, the wasn't middle. it? And he yeah. didn't he didn't look a wide player at all. No, but I mean, he did well when he led the line when he had to when he, he was the only fit striker. I think the thing is as well with him, we tend to forget he's only nineteen. Nineteen. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's the bit in it. You, you know, you, well, you got him from West Brom and we played we paid whatever X amount of millions for him. We tend to forget that he's not a seasoned lad. He's, he's no. still coming through. He's still a youngster essentially. So I think yeah. there's still a lot to come from him. Yeah, he's had his Wales call-ups hasn't he he's played he's scored three what goals this season as you say unlucky not to have had it at the weekend 
and has had you know pretty mega injury problems mm. since arriving at Leeds too. So it's not been plain sailing for him, but in all he's got if his season stopped now you got to say it's been a successful one for him yeah defo right moving on to our next section shit out of the week <laughs> we have revamped the shit out of the week for 2019 where we <laughs> give uh one person or potentially a group of people as we did previously for like all the talks but um a, an award for being shit houses generally so i was struggling this week but i came up with two names ed woodward for sacking Mourinho that was uh, my first thought process and uh serial winner uh, the moose of talk spot again because Having got slagged by a lot of Leeds fans before, he's then took another chunk out of us this week by asking where we are in the fourth round of the FA Cup. He also said that it was a disgrace that we played a weekend team against QPR as well. That appears to be the talk spot rhetoric of the week if they had a similar award to us because a lot of them have been saying that. Adrian Durham's come out and said that yeah, Klopp well. disrespe <laughs> disrespected it uh, and that we disrespected it as well by playing a load under 23s. Don't you have to take it all into context though? Like... You look at Leeds, and every I think most Leeds fans are happy with the team we put out because of the games that we played over Christmas and how they went into extra time and when mm -hmm. we came back. Um, the injuries we've had, I mean, you could see in them games at times that Klitsch, even probably for last month, Klitsch maybe needed just a game out just to, to sit out. We, we discussed Douglas earlier. I said he looked like he had lead in his boots, so it gives him a rest there. And I think every decision that Bielsa's made for QPR has a good reason behind it. There's also a wider context for me, um, <clears throat> and there's an irony point as well, that TalkSport are now slagging for people not respecting the FA Cup, but the people behind the FA Cup have sold it to the highest bidder for so mm. long that they've devalued it anyway, so but, you can't even get it on yeah. telly. It's it on BT Sport, and, yeah. and, and then we have a five o'clock FA Cup final, which yeah. is against any form of... Well, just look at this round. How many games at 12.30 on a Saturday? Well, it's spread over four spread days. spread yeah. over it all because of overseas telling. on Saturday afternoon at three, weren't they? Ten times. Yes. That was it, which is... Which is ridiculous. Yeah. So and also, I think... Do you know what? I, I honestly think it is the head coach's right to pick absolutely. who they think. Because at the end of the day, the fans will either get them out or the owner will get them out because results will, will go against them. I, I think you... That's... When you turn up, I don't know, it might be stretching it, but when you pay your... You tick it in. You think you actually, especially season two. You're actually saying, "No, I trust what's going on here," to for the people to make the right decisions most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, away from all the love for the club and all that sort of thing. You actually sort of saying, "Yeah, we trust this guy to do it." And he, and you're right. He gave explanation from one to eleven as to why he'd done it. Two days before, <laughs> yeah, two days before, which was yeah, and I don't think it changed. I don't think it, 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 that changed anything uh, in any way, but. I think he was right. I think it was good that he did that because he explained to fans. And I don't, I haven't seen any dissent from anybody saying, oh, "No, I've not." Is, I, not in any to any major a major extent. And also, and I, I felt he was genuine about the cup as well. I think he thought, "Yeah, I want to win this, but I can do it with these players, and I'm going to have to do it with some of these players because mm. some are missing or suspended or what have you." So I was, I was fine with it. Yeah. I did not feel in any way it was anything near what we've seen. You know, certain. No, or whatever, yeah, yeah. anything like that. No. No, not even, not even just you know casting off the game at all. It wasn't like that at all. He wanted to win that, mm. definitely. Mm. Yeah. So uh, I think we could. I've, give... got, I've got another nominee. Go on. Oh, um, Neil Warnock, just for having the temerity of calling someone else classless. Yeah. Unbelievable with the well, that was class. deflection tactics, wasn't it? Yeah. That was, just... After losing to Jim, what his whole career? Yeah, <laughs> it was. That was classic Warnock. That was to yeah. go on about the, the Nathaniel Klein thing when when his team had lost. He also he also tipped in about Tammy Abraham this week as well. Really? He also tipped in saying Tammy Abraham had agreed to go to Cardiff in summer, but then yeah. turned up at Villa. So it's, it's just typical Warnock, isn't it? Typical. Yeah. He, so, could, he could get it every week. So ooh, yeah. So <laughs> ooh, it, we, also we got to put Daniel Ayala in there as well because yeah, he, he goes in there every, every week. week. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. for being him. Yeah, uh, so uh, do we have a general consensus who should win it? Ben. Um, I don't know. Oh God. Raggy? I'm going Neil Warnock. Neil Warnock? Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> Moose. Moose. Uh, you, you feel free to not answer Popey, but you can chuck one out there. I ain't kind of, but it's really aggravated me this week. <laughs> <laughs> Except at work. Uh, yeah. uh, who forgot? Nobody's really gone on my skin this week. No, I'd say, yeah, the, the FA for flogging their so-called, mm. well, showpiece cup anyway. Mm. They have, haven't they? They're lifting their skirts. Uh, essentially, whoever. that's all they've done. And it's the same with everything now. The yeah. Premier League has become so cash rich that 
any club who's at risk of getting dumped out of it are terrified of getting dumped out of it so they feel the weakened side so they've got a stronger side for the league any team that's got a chance of winning it feel the weakened side because they desperately want to win it to stay in the Champions League because that also brings some money same in the Championship anybody who's got half a chance of going up desperately want the money that's in the Premier League it's been sold to Blooming BT and anybody else who wants to buy it I think it about didn't they say something like 37 countries have bought a stream to the FA Cup Leeds was shown in 65 countries yeah mine didn't have any commentary on which was a bit weird I streamed it to have any commentary, yeah. which was a bit strange. And it meant you had to go down to London on a Sunday, which is a school night, Ben. Yeah, yeah that was shit. How yeah. did you teach Phil Monday morning? One, please. Hey, first day back <laughs> at school as well, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, eyes. bags under eyes. Didn't like <laughs> it. Forgot pencil case. Mm. Yeah. Pencil. It is what it is. <laughs> yeah. So let's give it a FA. Just going back to my tweet in 2014, how old were you then? 2014? What year are you now? 2015? No, 2019 now, Ben. 2019. Who's pissed? Matt, he's been very good at maths. Have you been in Ben's amper? He's been a proper long day. I had a 2014. Well, I'm 21 now, so work it out. Honestly, man. Great maths. Just just five five off. Yeah. Take five off, mate. 16. Well done. So I was making stupid tweets, you were 16. Congratulations. Yeah. Anyway, that kind of brings us to an More end of episode 16, 39. <laughs> uh, thanks to every... Oh, no, it doesn't actually. We've got a competition running until Thursday. So if you want to win two VIP tickets to the sold-out Derby County game in box 48, got it right this week, <laughs> uh, all you need to do is leave us a five-star review on either Facebook or iTunes. Ensure that you leave your correct name or Twitter handle in. Give us a them. nice paragraph and stuff as well. Yeah, one guy, one guy just, just put, put. Don't put. This is great. One guy put as a subject uh, <laughs> at his Twitter handle. Then the comments was at his Twitter handle, <laughs> and there's just five stars. I was like, ah, nice one. A lot of thought going into that. <laughs> but cheers. So yeah, if you want a chance of winning, uh, we've got quite a few entrants. I think about thirty. Uh, if you want a chance of winning, stick yourself uh, a five-star review on Facebook or iTunes. Uh, make sure you leave your name and your Twitter handle and I'll announce it at some point on our social media on Thursday and then we'll sort you out some tickets for the game on Friday. So, uh, massive thanks to Adam Pope for coming in. Thank you for having me. No, mate, nice. it's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, um, look forward to the game on Friday just, with just, Noel. Just yes. a quick one before you go, Adam. Are we going to go? <laughs> you <hear> this question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think yes. Yes. Uh, that'll do. Another one, which is one we've asked sort of all season, would you... Oh, rather no, watch Bielsa football again. and not go up or watch Pulis football and go up um, do you know what I am a bit of a purist really I don't know, this is so enjoyable in many ways this season so <laughs> I think the Bielsa one yeah. yes, yes. Corpy <laughs> yes uh, get in pass that because I know I remember I remember working just down the road from here at the Builders Merchants years ago when Leeds won the title and I remember there was a guy a lad called Tony worked in the yard and he said the best days you know he said great won the title and all that 8 9, nine was the best season the going up was the best season it was fantastic it was be- even better than when he looks back at the memories that year was better than winning the the old first division if you like wow, yeah. um, and so I think we should enjoy this because mm. if he does it it is a miracle in its own right the way he's doing it so I just so want it to happen because it's um, obviously for the city and all the fans and everything but the fact that he's had the cojones to do it this way and keep doing it this way it'll be incredible that'll make it even better one of the great stories and, um, and to finish off what about your beloved Everton your second love behind Leeds United obviously yes it's, um, <laughs> sort of think sort of think they're going in the right direction with Marco Silva the ground move uh, I think it's needed I love the old the old lady but um, yeah it's uh Going in the right direction, yeah. I think it was such a setback. Cooman spent a fortune, you know, loads of players the same ill. Fans hated Allardyce. Objectively, a lot of other head coaches think, right, they did a good job, got them to eighth. But I think they're going in the right direction mm. with Silver. And there is some attractive stuff to watch. Speak to the lads that go all the time at the family and that. So, yeah, um, be all right. But can't beat the top side. Just mm. can't. And that's, that's the issue. Just cannot beat the top side. So, six at best, isn't it? So something's going to have to change to get there. Now they've made a statement today, aren't they, that they're going to win the Premier League in the new stadium. So something has to change now. It has to be <laughs> big change. That's a, that's a, that's a, do you know what? I'd love them it. just to win the League Cup. They've never won it. Yeah. yeah. You know, so um, if you could just get a bit, bit of silverware, then. But yeah, start challenging for be genuine sort of fifth, sixth contenders, and then maybe, maybe then you can push on. But I think I'm pleased overall. But look, don't get to see them. 
so you don't get but you can't comment as shrewdly as you can on, on say Leeds who mm. you see all the time but I tell you what they all want them back they all want Leeds back yeah oh, I've seen a few oh, Premier League fans they, coming do. Out they might not I mean man you were singing Leeds the other day weren't they in the cup you could hear it couldn't you yeah, yeah, um, mm. yeah so they all want it back they'll miss the day out and uh, and the sort of edge that the, that the, yeah, the game yeah. brings you know so yeah and it would make a massive difference to the Premier League it would make them I don't know if people can hear that on Facebook. <laughs> they can, they can. Yeah. We'll explain what it is yeah. in a minute. But, um, but yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it would make such a massive difference to the Premier League, I think, in, in away days and all that sort of thing. Yeah, definitely. Having, having Leeds back would be be great. Just give me one season in the Premier League with the Whelan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be nice. It would be yeah. good, to be fair. Yeah. So, yeah, that does bring us to the end of episode 39. A massive thanks for Popey for coming in. Thank you. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, as you can probably hear in the background, the Fat Chance podcast guys are warming up. I think that were probably Mickey and some I Octave <laughs> uh, singing something. So that's our definite cue to leg it before they come and uh, take over the desk. So a massive thanks to everybody for listening. Don't forget to get involved in the competition if you want uh, if you want to leave us a shit review do but you're not going to win the tickets <laughs> it's entirely up to you um, and tune in next week where we're joined by Dan Hearn uh, Leeds United ladies manager is going to come in and talk to us about the ladies game up at Leeds at the moment and nice. uh, coming back into the club and stuff like that so that'll be good and then we've got some other guests lined up as well I've been busy at New Year been, um, been wooing people not really it's been begging really it's it's harassing will you come on my show please, please come on show please anyway that brings us to an end so again massive thanks to Popey and uh, here's to three points on Friday hopefully 2-1 to the to the Paul to the the hero is Carl shut 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 shut